Hey folks, Ray from DCRamRaker.com here. I've got the Sinto Spartan Ultra out for a bit of a run today. Uh, it's going to be kind of a city run and then to the park a little bit. There's some tunnels and all sorts of jazz that should test the GPS capabilities. Uh, so I got the exercise screen there. I'll go ahead and I'll enter that. Uh, running, yep, that works for me. Um, I'm not going to use any of the other modes. Trail running, nope. Treadmill, nope. We'll just use running. Uh, so hit enter on that. Uh, it should connect to my heart rate strap that's paired there. Yep, you can see the top, it's got the little uh, heart rate icon and it's got the GPS icon locked. I assume that means I'm locked anyways. Um, so the display I've set at 100% brightness uh, just because it's it's basically kind of bright and sunny out here. So you gotta do that in order to be able to, to see it, quite honestly. I tried at 50%, it wasn't enough um, to be able to easily see at a glance. So I'm filming with a GoPro, so keep in mind that you know, the quality is not going to be quite as nice as you would see from some other videos with a full DSLR. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and get started. I'll catch up a little bit into the run, kind of some shady spots, some sunny spots, show you how pace looks for instant pace. Uh, I'm not wearing a foot pod or anything else, just a heart rate strap. So let's catch up in a little bit. Okay, so just to give you a bit of a feeling for what I'm running through from a building standpoint. Excuse me, one, two, three, four, five, six, I don't know, seven, eight story buildings. Uh, so, big concrete one right there. Looking at pace, I'm doing 415, 420 a kilometer. Um, I found it pretty consistent so far. I'm not having too much of an issue there with that. Uh, it seems to react really quickly to big pace changes. So, I'm about to go up these steps here, see how quickly it reacts. So, I've just stopped. So, slowing down. There we go, still slowing. A bit slow, but I am walking, so probably confusing for it. There we go, 10. So now we've got started again. So you can see it's responding pretty quickly, that ship there, which is good. I'm back at pace right now, but still catching up. It's not unusual to be honest, it's about what I would expect. So when we catch up again, one's a little further than running, I got a sunny spot. So just to give you an idea of what I'm running on here for our first half of this run, this is an elevated walkway that kind of like crosses Paris. It goes under trees, so you see this tree cover right here coming up. Then there's sections like this that slice right through the middle of a building. Pretty cool, actually. More buildings. And then we have tunnels underneath 15-story buildings. And then lastly, we have dense forest next to this concrete wall on both sides. It's maybe eight meters, seven meters high. So enough that it's without question kind of the most difficult spot in the city that I know of for GPS. Oh, and more tunnels. In case you're wondering in that last tunnel, the unit switches up was called fuse speed. Basically means it uses the accelerometer to determine my pace in the tunnel. And all those tunnels did really well. It kept the pace almost identical to what I had going in the tunnel, which means that it's pretty well calibrated at that point. Yep, still looking for that sunspot. Not quite sure where it is, but it's not here. So I've been trying to find this sun here, but I don't think it's gonna happen. I got blue sky over there, cloud over there. The clouds are definitely going this way. Nonetheless, it's still fairly bright here. So you can see this is actually the lap summary screen. It's pretty darn cool. Something that's not on garments, for example, is the ability to see all my lap splits thus far, and you can see the uh, heart rate average and average cadence it looks like, and the average pace for each lap. So Garmin has it on their Edge series, their cycling units, not the running watches. If I swipe here, there is the track. There's just little dots that you can see. And if I swipe again, you can see my track overall. So it kind of zigzag and slowly work my way back. Sorry three swipes for that time. Now I'm back to sort of the information page. I'm at about 8k almost here and uh, cruising along. Pace is fairly steady at 423 number just as I cruise down this hill here. So again, staying pretty darn steady. So 
So we'll keep on running. Maybe I'll find a sunspot before the end of the uh, run here. Okay, I finally found a sunspot. You can see it right up ahead there on the ground. The building that's cutting right through. So here we go. So I can see the screen just fine. No problems at all. You're probably having a tough spot seeing the screen because of the reflection, the sweat on there, and so on. But here to say, no real problems in the sun. Okay, so time to wrap things up. There we go, just stopped. See how long it takes to recognize the stop there. So pretty quick, and 26 right at the top corner there, 43 that's basically flat. So I can get the stop button now. There we go, that's stopped. Hit the stop button on my other watches. Okay, both of those are stopped. So at this point we'll go ahead and hit the end. And, come on. Okay, so it's the bottom button. No touch screen doesn't work on that screen, which actually I like, so that may have been annoying, um, but it's actually good because one of the problems, if you look at like the Garmin Epix, for example, is that if you finish up an activity and you're sweaty and whatnot, and somehow you hit the wrong button, you can discard it, which I've done before and it's super annoying. Uh, so I like the fact that on that final screen for save versus, uh, basically not, you know, basically go forward or not, uh, that it's that it's simply button presses, so that's good. So I'll go ahead and I'll scroll this through this real quick here. So at the top there, I've got my total time and the time I started running. I've got the kilometers, uh, and it looks like elevation just below that, it's really hard to see. Uh, that's 65 meters, I believe it is. Um, and then below that, I've got kilometers an hour average and the pace, 441 a kilometer average. My average heart rate is 158 a range of 75 through 170. I really like the way this is done actually for all these stats here. Uh, it's much cleaner than doing the whole min-max stuff that a lot of other watches do. Uh, just to have it kind of right below the main average stat, it's nicely done. I've got cadence, uh, then calories, my PTE, my recovery time at 28 hours, and then Epoch at 327 milliliters per kilo. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and click next here. I think I get my lap stats. Yep, there's all my auto laps. So that same lap summary screen, very clean, I really like that screen a lot. Uh, it's really well done. Next again, and I got the big green checkbox, which means that's that's all the, the show there is. So let's go ahead and head on inside and look at the actual GPS track data itself. Actually, before we go inside, one quick thought and note on the screen here. Um, I think kind of my summary is that it's good, but not great. Uh, the best way to describe it is that they're gonna be, like for me, I've got really good eyesight, so I can generally see it across the board uh, especially at 100% brightness. Um, but I know from reviewing watches long enough, if I look at some watches that don't have like the greatest screens out there, so something like the original Vivo Active, for example, um, that's a case where if you don't have great eyesight, uh, it's probably gonna be harder to see. And I think this falls into that same camp where if you've got good eyesight, there's no problems. If you've got average eyesight, there's probably still no problems. But if your eyesight is a bit uh, more vintage, um, then you might have some issues seeing the screen. So that's kind of my, my final thoughts. Anyways, let's go look at GPS tracks. Okay, now that we're inside, uh, I've got the, the activity files pulled up. So I had three watches with me here. I had a Forerunner 735 XT. Um, I had a Sunto Spartan Ultra, and the 735 XT was connected to a chest strap. The Sunto Spartan Ultra, Spartan Ultra was also connected to a chest strap, the same chest strap, in fact. Uh, that'd be the stride running strap. And then I had the Polar M600 using the optical heart rate sensor. Um, so this is my analysis tool that I can use to basically combine or compare any files that I want from any watch. Um, and it shows them at one second recording rate, so I get the true fidelity of the data, uh, and I can look at different stats. So this is actually the map of where I went. Um, but first I'm gonna kind of scroll down and look at basically some of the, the stats overall. Um, now I actually had the stride power running meter connected to the Sunto Spartan. Um, so you see those up there. Uh, but this is some other information that I get in terms of comparison heart rates. And I don't tend to use the summary data that much because it's it's kind of making, it can, it can obscure errors. Uh, instead I wanna look at some of the details, but it's interesting to look at nonetheless. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and down. I'm gonna look at this distance one right here. So everything's shown in meters in this. Uh, so you can see the 735 XT came in at 12.1K uh, or 2100 meters, basically 2160 meters. Uh, the Sunto Spartan came in at 
12.3K and the Polar M600 came in at 12K almost exactly, well, exactly on the dot. Um, so let's go and look at the actual tracks themselves. Um, now, there's three colors here. I'm sorry, the way the auto color population thingy works is that sometimes it chooses colors that are very, very similar. Uh, for example, this purple and this um, burgundy there. Uh, so you're gonna have to kind of zoom in and, and look more carefully at it. So I'm gonna start at the beginning of my run. We're just gonna kind of go through the different sections here uh, and compare them to how things went. So I started over here on the water there. Um, things went fairly well and right into this like bridge tunnel sort of thing. It's not very long, maybe 50 meters long. Uh, you can see the Spartan looks like it went out into the water a little bit. I saw this exact same thing, um, I think it was a day or two ago and I did a quick little test out here where it went into the water. Uh, but it covered, it recovered very quickly so I'm not too concerned about it. Uh, if you look in satellite view, uh, which is usually how I look at some of this stuff, uh, just because with map view, you're trying to compare, you know, whether or not they've got the GPS alignment correct, which isn't always the case. Uh, and don't go too far. Like I just went too far into this view, which then tilts it and it makes everything look wrong. So that's what should be there. Uh, these other tracks were spot on. The, the Ultra was a little bit into the water. Not enough that I'm really concerned about. We're talking basically one boat width right there, you can see. Uh, so it's like a, maybe 10 meters in total between there and where our track was. So going along the K, uh, no problems. They're all in the in the ballpark there. Keep in mind that you are looking at some tracks coming backwards right now, so that's a bit of a bit of something to keep in mind. Uh, going across the bridge, uh, the 400-735 XT and the Spartan. Uh, the Spartan did extremely well. It nailed this perfectly around the corner. Uh, the 735 XT may have cut it by like a meter or two, which is close enough for what I'm worried about. Um, the M600 cut it by a couple meters more, so not quite as good there. Uh, in this section right here. Uh, so right when that middle there, uh, the Spartan actually cut across the trees where the other two did correctly hit where I went there. Again, we're talking like two meters different. So really, really minor differences there. Um, down this stretch here, uh, it looks like actually only the 735 XT got me on the road, which is where I was actually running. Uh, the other ones had me more in the trees, which wasn't quite correct. I was on the road in this area here all the way down. Uh, and you can see on this corner here, so I made this very sharp kind of almost doubling back corner, uh, and the Sunto Spartan nailed that perfectly. Uh, the other two sort of like missed it. This is about a seven story building that I basically just wrapped around the very point of. Um, so we're not talking a huge difference, but it's something just to keep in mind where that actually did correctly do that. And that starts to account for some of that distance extra that we saw um, in the total numbers at the end, right? It's kind of the marginal gains thing, right? Where every like 10 or 15 or 20 meters extra does matter. In this case, that was correctly done. Um, and so we go down through here. Now, while it did nail that corner, um, it then kind of sort of missed the section here. Uh, I ran basically along the side of the road first and then I crossed down later on. It thought I crossed earlier. Um, so that's something to keep in mind a little bit there. Um, actually, no, I crossed right there because remember I, I took a video, you saw me looking back on this where I said there's this first seven or eight building. So yeah, this is correct. So I assumed to actually did nail that. The other two were all on the street a little bit longer than I expected. Then you can see going up onto the steps, remember I walked up the steps right there, that's a section right there. Um, and that is something that uh, all three units seem to get pretty much right. And then I'm up onto the, the promenade here. Um, and all these units are nailing this, and it, as they should to some degree, right? I'm up on top of something that has less building uh, in the way. Keep on going down here. A little bit of distraction from the polar as I near this one corner of the building. Uh, I'm not super concerned there. I'm more interested down recovering as I go through some buildings. Um, so right here is where I went through that building. Remember I mentioned that? Uh, and you can see the the Sunto had a rough time there. It, it actually ran me through the someone's living room. Um, the other two were kind of spot on right there. You can see this kind of went down and around that, that area. So not quite right, um, but uh, good effort. Uh, across, it's all clear there. Uh, this is a kind of a, clear, a relatively clear spot. Building big buildings on both sides so that actually all three units did well there. Uh, now here is where I approached the tunnel. Um, so this whole section from here, right there, into over here-ish is the tunnel. Uh, so the units kind of tracked blindly into there and then they sort of didn't really know what to do, but all of them actually nailed that correctly. I don't see any data points like out here or out here, which is what I would worry about. Uh, so they got that right. Uh, on the exit, the 400 XT was a tiny bit off coming into that tree section where I talked about the uh, like seven meters high or so, um, off by maybe like five, 10 meters. 
uh, and then you see after that the polar gets off briefly. This section is really hard. I know it doesn't look it in the video because of the wide angle of the GoPro, but it's super, super tough for GPS units because of the fact that uh, it does have this like canyon effect of trees with concrete walls with buildings on the side of it. It's, it's really a kind of a neat little nightmare. Uh, and you can see they struggle a little bit here. Everyone kind of struggles to some degree in this section, not like immensely. I'm not seeing data points off the neighborhoods here, which I'm really concerned about. Uh, they're all close, but not like perfect. Um, on this turn here, uh, the I don't know what the, the polar was doing. It was just kind of wandering off by itself. Um, the other two got it. I would say this turn here, the, the Spartan nailed that perfectly as I came under this tunnel right there and churn. The other ones kind of like, um, the premature tunnel entry, if you will. Uh, and then they all three of them lined up perfectly for this kind of broad boulevard up there. I mean, you really have to kind of screw up quite a bit to miss this. It's really no very light tree cover there. And then I up here uh, churned, all is mostly well there. I'm not really seeing any major differences. They're all pretty close. Um, these are all right. And I was in the trees in that area, so they're all good there. Um, this is where the section right here is where I was talking about kind of running downhill and pace, and you can see all these units, this is wide open, uh, and they they easily nailed that. There's, I mean, there's no like variance here. As I go across the bridge, it's perfect. Um, I get across the bridge and I make this downstairs sort of thing. Uh, the Sunto and the 9 or 735 XT nailed that. Um, the Polar struggled a little bit going under this bridge. It's maybe 75 meters wide. It's, it's the Perifique compared, or it's the next, it's like the internal, um, ring road that's not the highway in Paris and so it's pretty wide uh, and it kind of messed that up a little bit and then next these big buildings here they're pretty clear actually it's pretty close to, um, these are all relatively big tall buildings here I'm on this stretch uh, and it really nailed this. this is where the sunspot was it was back in uh, it's actually just up here somewhere um, and again no problems there they correctly got me right here at this bridge when I went up uh, to double back and wait for the lot light, stop light and came through. Um, now this section here is sort of like my second tough test spot in Paris um, for GPS. So on this one right here uh, is, if you're in Paris, there's a gigantic green building on the, on the water there. Um, and uh, there's a bar there called Wonderlust. And that's uh, basically a, it's a really tough like GPS canyon. I've got what is like a 10, 12, maybe even more story building all on this side right here. And then this little road down the middle with three lanes and then the same big building here. Uh, and all three of these units struggle in different ways. I would say the, the Spartan definitely struggled the most through here. There's no question about that. It's definitely more in the building than the other two are. Um, but certainly they weren't perfect either. And then I drop down onto the water and uh, things are relatively pretty good all the way back to my stopping point. So there you go. Um, I would say overall it did pretty well. Like It's not perfect, um, but this is actually a really, really tough running route. I, I know it's not like a redwood forest or something, but from a city standpoint, um, short of being in Manhattan, this is an extremely tough running route for GPS units to actually nail all the segments on. Like it's one thing to do one chunk well, but to do everything well is tricky. Uh, so um, overall that was well. Oh, and by the way, let me show you one kind of neat little thing here. I'm gonna scroll up. Um, and elevation data. So this is fun. This was the only unit I had on here that um, had uh, a barometric altimeter. And so you see how just how smooth that data is and it looks really pretty uh, compared to the, uh, the teal there is a 735 and this brown is the M600. These are both GPS based altimeters. They're really all over the map. Uh, and so you can see kind of the importance of a barometric altimeter there. So with that, uh, overall, not too shabby. Again, display had no problems reading it outside as long as I bumped the, the, the brightness up, which obviously would impact battery. And I don't have like a perfect feeling yet for where that line is. Um, I think I can pull it down from 100% to probably in the 80s or so. Um, but I gotta, I gotta do get some more runs, different conditions and kind of figure it out. So with that, thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button down below or the uh, like button or really both to be really super cool. And check out my other Sunto Spartan Ultra videos. Thanks for watching.